of stove polish just disappeared. Wait a second. Billy Joe. Yes, ma'am. No, she's still a blonde. <laughs> Mom's missing a gallon of stove polish. You don't think I dye my hair with stove polish? What do you dye it with? <laughs> there have been an awful lot of things disappearing around here lately. My best apron and somebody snipped the middle right out of my clothesline. Well, I can't find the handle to the carpet sweeper either. You know, I wonder what... Oh! What was that? The cannonball. I told Charlie to watch the steam pressure. <laughs> in a row. Never has. But whatever it was, it was awful close. <laughs> Uncle Joe, I... Did you hear it? Hear it? It nearly blew us out of the kitchen. Wonder if they got the message in Hooterville. If they did, they're probably calling up the National Guard. I'm only firing blanks. Hey, this is the handle to the carpet sweeper. Ugh. Mom's apron. I had to have something soft to swab with. Why didn't you use your head? <laughs> hey, you could stop worrying what happened to your stove polish. Yeah, it took just about a gallon. Kate, would you believe this is the same old cannon that was resting out in front of the courthouse gathering pigeons? No, I wouldn't. Well, this is the piece out of a clothesline. <laughs> Do that again. The volunteers are only expecting three test blasts. And another one will bring that fire department train a roaring out here to extinguish the hotel. You mean this thing has something to do with the fire department? I know. Instead of these fire alarm rockets, you're going to give everyone in the valley one of these cannons. Of course not. Oh, thank goodness. I'd hate to think what would happen if you put temptation in the way of that many people. Instead of sarcasm at me, why don't you give me a chance to explain? As the chief, I've always been worried about the one weak link in the fire department. So you decided to resign. <laughs> what would happen if a farmhouse caught fire and the owner was to fire off his alarm rocket and the volunteers was to sleep through it, I ask myself. The farmer would stand more than an even chance of saving his farm, you answer. <laughs> this may be a little complicated for the female intellect. This cannon is... Is to wake up volunteers in case a rocket goes off. Who's going to fire it? Well, I guess everybody will take a turn standing rocket watch. What were you saying about female intellect? Well, anybody can use a telephone after Edison invented it. Edison? Uncle Joe, I'm not having the volunteers hanging around this hotel night after night waiting to fire off that cannon. Now, there's the female intellect for you. They ain't going to be hanging around. Whoever has Skywatch duty can take the cannon home with him. I thought, when it's your turn? I don't take a turn. I'm the chief. Back to the weak link. <laughs> Look. Uh, Uncle Joe, ask chief. You are responsible for everything, aren't you? You're doggone right I am. Yeah, well, now, why don't you go out to the kitchen and clean up the mess this thing made? <laughs> Uncle Joe, either that, or I'm sending the cannon back to the courthouse pigeons. <laughs> All right, Joe. Wrenching out your dainties? <laughs> it's Kate's apron. He does nice work, Charlie. Would you like to take on our overalls? Hey, did you hear the signal cannon in Hooterville? Yeah, we was in Sam's store. Knocked three cans of molasses off of his shelf. Sam wanted to resign from the volunteers. Yeah, we told him he couldn't. He stuck with the job. Stuck with the job. Hey, that's pretty funny. Molasses stuck with the job. You get it, Charlie? I'm the one that said it. Yeah, but did you get it? <laughs> take that signal cannon over to Fred Ziffles. He's got the duty tonight. Fred won't be doing any duty. He's got a mighty sick pig on his hands. Can't Doris look after it? That pig don't like Doris. Neither does Fred. <laughs> take it over to Ben Miller's. He's next on the schedule. Ben's busy. What about Newt Kiley? Newt Kiley's having trouble with his well. Yeah, he fell in. Excuses, excuses. What about Sam? Well, Sam's gonna be mopping molasses all night. Can he look out the window at the sky once in a while? Well, he wouldn't see much. He's got the broken panes in his window full of newspapers. The cannon sure is powerful. You know it broke the windshield in Dr. Stewart's car? There's a lot of opposition to that cannon in Hooterville, Joe. Well, wait till there's a fire and the horse will be on the other foot. Why don't we get one of them clacks and horns like the Crabwell Corners volunteers has got? 
crab well corners. That's about all they got's a klaxon horn. Oh, they got a firehouse to put the horn on. We don't need a firehouse. Because we ain't got a fire engine. <laughs> we don't need a fire engine because we got the train. They got one of the best chiefs in the county. <laughs> now, Charlie, how can you say that? Bink Sharfield can't hold a candle to Joe. Thanks, Floyd. I've seen Binks wash, and it don't come out half as clean as Joe's. <laughs> Oh, he's sky watching in the lobby. <laughs> oh. oh, what about the cannon? What about it? Is it inside or outside? I don't know. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Playing checkers. Oh, checkers? Aren't Billy and Bobby asleep? Yeah. Then who's Uncle Joe playing with? Go on, move. We haven't got all night. One. That was a dumb move. Go on, stupid, it's your move again. <laughs> Uncle Joe, where's the... Bert Brain's concentrating. <laughs> Watch this kid. I've got him trapped. He falls for it every time. He never seems to learn. <laughs> Go on. Jumping. <laughs> that does it. You want to play another game? <laughs> well, you don't know when you've met your match, huh? Me and him's playing for the championship of the hotel. <laughs> What's the score? I've won five games. How many did you win? <laughs> Four. Three. The one she won for you didn't count. <laughs> you wouldn't have won two of those other games if you hadn't insisted on using last year's rules. <laughs> Uncle Joe, where's the cannon? It's outside. You sure? <laughs> Satisfied? Yeah. Happy sky watching. <laughs> okay. Will you look at that? Stupid dog doesn't even know how to set up the board right. <laughs> Of all the dumb plays, throwing your ace to Sam. Well, I was building pins. Hey, do you smell something burning? Yes, Charlie. He loses a nickel and he carries on like he's lost a quarter. <laughs> well, it smells like wood. Hey, the tender's on fire. A spark must have blown out of the smokestack. Don't panic. Oh, where'd you go on? To light Sam's fire alarm rocket. What for? So Joe will see it, fire off the cannon, and the fire department will come. We are the fire department. <laughs> well, what are we supposed to do? Start our water pump, unroll the hose, and wet down the wood. Good idea. <laughs> Aren't you going to help him? What for? Joe's got the pump and the hose at the Shady Rest. <laughs> it's supposed to be on the train. Joe changed the rules. He's the chief. What we ought to do is keep the rules and change the chief. I'd better call for help. Somebody stole the pump from the fire hose. Uh, don't you remember? Joe made us leave it with him. Well, oh, that's right. Don't bat it. Hold this. Help me put it on the tender. What for? So everybody know we're the fire department. Yeah, well, we're also the fire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey, fellas. Fine thing, deserting your post in a time of panic. Well, I was making a call. You'd think you could forget your social life when there's an emergency. I was calling the Crabwell Corners Volunteer Fire Department. I guess they'll be rolling any minute now. Uncle Joe. Oh. 
There's a fire. Fire? Where are my boots? You're wearing them. Out of my way. I got a boom with cannon. Now, wait a second. It isn't your fire. It's the klaxon over at Crabwell Corners. It is? Ain't that pathetic. Harry's pretty good. No match for our cannon. Well, they finally got started. Sounds like they're heading for Hooterville. Amateurs probably took the wrong turn and got lost. Oh, I don't think they're lost. That siren sounds like they mean business. <laughs> Thanks for getting here so fast, Bink. That it? Yeah. Well, we'll have her out in no time. All right, boys, roll out the hose, use the fog and nozzle. They sure know what they're doing, Bink. Yeah, you see there, Floyd? Floyd! What are you doing that for? To let Joe know what's going on. <laughs> the fire in Hooterville. I told you I heard the Crabwell Corners fire engine. What are they doing in our territory? We never run over there to put out their fires. For which they're probably very grateful. <laughs> Wait a minute, I know what it is. Their fire engine's on fire and they come over here for us to put it out. Come on, let's go. They're the most inefficient bungalow. What happened? Our chief's letting us know there's a fire. <laughs> That's it. Nice work, boys. Charlie, stick this on the front of the fender. Floyd, get the hose off the hand car. Joe, don't worry, Bink. We'll have your fire engine out in no time. All right, hurry it up, men. This is your chief speaking. Oh, chief. You keep out of this, Kate. All right, you amateurs, keep away from that truck. Get that dog down off of there. <laughs> Come on, men. Uncle Joe, I think you got your fires vice versa. What? Bink didn't come here to get put out. He came here to put us out. The wood and the tender caught on fire. Then why didn't you put it out yourselves? Could it be because you had the pump and the hose? <laughs> You're always saying I'm dumb. If I was half as dumb as you are, I'd be dumber than I am. <laughs> <clears throat> Who gets this? What is it? It's a bill for our expenses. We always ask the other fire departments to chip in, and we have to leave our territory to help them out. Well, who asked you to come over here? Well, he... I did. I called him. You had no authority. You should have checked with me first. If by that time, the whole train might have burned up. Then give it to them. It's their train. <laughs> Twenty-two dollars. Eighteen of that's for a new windshield. Well, four dollars for putting out the train sounds reasonable enough. We get ten dollars for a house call. <laughs> We'll pay the four dollars, but that's all. It was Joe's fool cannon that broke your windshield. It was a fire department's fool cannon that busted it. You shot it off. Next time, stick to shooting off your mouth. That don't bust no windshield. <laughs> well, Joe, come up with the eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars for a busted windshield? The whole truck's hardly worth twelve. Eighteen dollars. I'll pay you tomorrow. I'll take this along in case you don't. <laughs> you can't. We haven't got a fire department without it. You haven't got one with it. <laughs> Uncle Joe, it's time you face the fact you don't have a fire department. All you got is a pump, a piece of hose, a skyrocket alarm, and a cannon. You got a ban. You got a ban? No. What kind of a fire department's that? Uncle <laughs> Joe, you are wasting your time. Hey, it isn't just equipment that makes a fire department. It's a manpower. And our volunteers are just as good as Crabwell Corners any day. For how much? Eighteen dollars. You mean you like to have a little contest with us? It won't be a contest. No, it won't. And when you lose, you'll owe me eighteen dollars for the windshield and eighteen dollars for the bet. But we ain't gonna lose. Ha! <laughs> Joe, why couldn't you leave well enough alone? Kate, the honor of my chieftain's at stake. I'm gonna show you and him that a fire department's more than a fire truck with a busted windshield. 
It's the Hooterville Volunteers against the Crabwell Corner Volunteers. <laughs> being indoors so much. I'm taking him in to sell him. Why? Since my volunteers have deserted me, I'm going to lose a contest by default, and I'll have to pay Bink $36. You think you're going to get $36 for that? Boxy Snyder gave me a standing offer of $33.50. I figure I can push him up $2.50. <laughs> Uncle Joe, taking your friend for a walk? No, we're going out to play a set of tennis. <laughs> What is Uncle Joe doing with Geronimo? He's going to sell him to pay off Bink Sharples because he's going to lose by default. Selling his Indian? That's like selling his best friend. Gosh, I never thought he'd do that. Neither did I. I'm surprised at Mr. Drucker and Charlie and Floyd and everybody letting Uncle Joe down. They did him a favor. They never could have beaten Crabwell Corners. Well, why not? Uncle Joe explained some of the events to us, and they don't sound impossible. Yeah, what's so hard about seeing how fast you can climb a ladder? Or how far you can squirt a stream of water out of a hose? Anybody can do that. Even us. <laughs> Mom! Oh, no, 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 I'm not climbing Wait, any ladder. Wait, we can't let Uncle Joe sell his Indian. It means so much to Uncle Joe, and so much to the hotel. A hotel? Yeah, we need something to cover that hole in the carpet. <laughs> Child, we're going to save our firemen. <laughs> They're not coming. Oh, let's give them five minutes more, Ernie. I got to get back to my feed store. Hey, take a look at that. <laughs> Can't believe it. I didn't think you was gonna show up, Joe. Uh, I had to talk Pat Cooper out of his horse. He was gonna do some plowing today. <laughs> hi, Ben. Oh, hi, Kate. Hey, where's your men? These are them. Them? The volunteer fire department. We volunteer. We ain't gonna compete with them. Eighteen bucks. Oh. You're trying to shame me into defaulting, huh? Well, if that's the way you want it, it's okay with me. Oh, uh, this here's Ernie Caulfield, our justice of the peace. Any objection to him acting as judge? No, he looks fairly honest to me. <laughs> okay, let's get started. The first event will be safety net jumping. Each fire department will send one of its members up to the roof of the theater where they will jump into their respective nets. All right, men, let's go. Come on, snap into it. That's it. Get it around there. All right, girls, get our safety jumping net. What safety net? Carpooling. Unfold it careful so it don't tear no more. Hold it. You mean one of us is going to jump from the top of that roof? Yeah. Into a torn tarpaulin? <laughs> This event will be worth 10 points. It will be judged on accuracy and neatness. Well, that's 10 points for your side. Now, what's the next event? What's the next event? Ladder climbing. This is a race against time and is worth eight points. On my signal, each contestant will run to their fire truck, get a ladder, run to the wall, and climb up. Hooterville Fire Department first. Okay, Betty Joe, give it all you got. Come on, Betty! Come on! No, wait a minute! Go back! Go back! I forgot the other half of the ladder! <laughs> Doggone it! What's the next event? Oh, Squirtin. I will station myself at the end of the lot to measure the greatest distance each department can throw a stream of water. Crabwell Corners, start your squirting. Pressure! A hundred and twenty feet. You ready? Ready. Okay, start it up. <laughs> Here, give me a hand. Now hold it tight. 
just really pressures up. Why would you give us a choke? For crying out loud, Betty Jo. Here, hold this. The final event, the fireman's carry, was won by the Hooterville Volunteers. Fireman Kate Bradley carried her victim 50 feet in 22 seconds. <laughs> Mom, why did you carry Uncle Joe? Please, you were supposed to carry me. <laughs> Melambago got to me right at the start of the whistle. <laughs> Here are the final scores. Crabwell Corners Volunteers, 80 points. Hooterville Volunteers, 80 points. Well, nice going, Joe. I didn't think you'd get two points. Well, it's all how a chief handles his manpower. Well, <laughs> I'll take the $18. It was a tie. You didn't win. But a windshield. <laughs> One more event. Double or nothing. Uncle Joe. We're not leaving here until we get a clean-cut decision. Well, I don't mind taking your money, but we've gone through all the drills. Except one, the most important. What does a fireman do when he's sitting around the firehouse waiting for the alarm? You mean you're challenging Mr. Sharfle to a, a television-watching contest? <laughs> I'm challenging him to a game of cribbage. Checkers or Pinochle? Take your choice. Uncle Joe! I get my choice. Yeah. Oh, brother. Checkers. Do you realize that Bink is the county champion? Since when? Last week. Well, there goes your Indian. Champions was made to be beat. Bring on the checkers. Ah, oh, boy. Now I'm going. Your move, Bink. Can't. You concede? Yep. You win the game and the match. Who the real wins? Yay! That's as smart as dog. Oh, he ain't so smart. I learned him everything he knows. <laughs> Including running away. <laughs>